Hey guys, Krista here from Dave and Krista. So there are a lot of things that I love about the Show It website builder platform, um, but undoubtedly one of them is the ease that they make loading galleries. So you don't need any third-party plugins. It's all right in your Show It website. The galleries load quickly and you can add as many as you want. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up all the different kinds of galleries and I'm going to show you some of my favorite settings in Show It. So just to make this easy, I'm going to start with a blank page in Show It. So we'll do a blank page. I have this particular setup. This is our rosemary one. I have it set up to auto pull in the headers and footers, but if you're using Show It, you can adjust that. So I'm going to start by making my, my canvas a little bit larger and I'm going to click on this canvas and I'm going to give it a name just for organization's sake. So we'll name this gallery. It doesn't actually matter what you name this because you are the only one who ever sees this. And then I'm going to make this canvas a Pinterest style gallery, which means that as it loads, all of the images keep scrolling. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the color, the canvas type. So I'm going to come over to canvas and I'm going to go to, instead of normal, I'm going to make it grow with window. And I want to do that on mobile as well. So we want this to grow with the window. And that means that whenever I load images, as many images as I load, all of these images are going to start filtering in and the canvas will automatically grow in my browser. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my, um, my little widget down here where I can embed different things. So I'm going to embed a gallery and I'm going to make this gallery bigger. So let's go like this and I'm going to center it, um, vertically on my canvas. And then just for fun right now, I'm going to give this gallery a title because I think it's best practice to name your galleries for search engines. So let's name this Krista and Davey. We'll just pretend that maybe this was my wedding. If I was actually customizing this for search engines, I'd get a little bit more specific, but for demo purposes, we're going to keep it quick. So I'll click on this gallery and then I'm going to go up to manage images. And then from here, I can navigate to the folders that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use these images from my friend, Caitlin Joyce. She's a very talented photographer and I think I might filter by Arizona just to make sure I'm only getting these um, particular images in here. So let's go to Arizona. If I was um, doing this for a client site um, or my own site, there's a few things that I do. So first I would make sure that all of the images are sized ahead of time. Ideally, you want the long edge. Um, so if it's a horizontal image, that's like the wider part. If it's a vertical image, that's the taller part to be around 1200 pixels wide. You don't want these galleries to be really big. You don't want these images to be really heavy. So that means um, when I say heavy, I mean like a big file size. These, you don't want these to be high resolution images. You want them to be sized appropriately for the web. I will drop a tutorial in um, the notes below so that you guys can see how I size my images for the web to make sure that they're loading quickly. But um, if I was actually doing that, I'd make sure that they're sized appropriately and I would name them with keywords for most likely your location or the key search terms that you want to show up with um, before even uploading them. I'm going to come in though and start grabbing around 25 to 40 images. I think that's kind of the sweet spot for a gallery to make sure that you have enough to show off if it's a wedding, for example, the wedding without making it super sluggish. So I can sort these by name if I want, um, or I could kind of custom arrange them. So I'll just start clicking through and adding command. So do some of those. I'll just get a mix. And if I wanted to, I could take more time to arrange them and sort them. I'm just going to keep it quick though for now and kind of show off a, um, a variety of Caitlin's work for this wedding. And let's see, how many is that? That's 21. So we'll do one more. And I think that's totally fine for now. I'll hit save. And then you'll see these images come into the gallery. So by default, it's going to load them as a simple gallery, which means that it's one simple image at a time. And there are a few things that we could do for this. We could change it from fill where it fills the whole image to be contained. Um, and that would ensure that if it's vertical, you see the whole thing. If it's horizontal, you see the whole thing. Let me see if I hit preview. I think it should auto advance and we'll see the second one. So you can kind of see how this works. So there they are. And it'll kind of it's like a traditional slideshow kind of gallery. So that is one style of gallery that you can do. 
You can change whether it slides for the transition or it fades. You can change how fast it transitions or how slow. You can change the auto advance. So if you want it to go really fast, we could change it to do one second. It's not actually that fast. We can make it faster, like a half a second. Um, and then you could also do something like make this gallery a little bit smaller and then I'll center it. And we could add little icons to help somebody uh, advance it on their own. So we could do an icon right here and we'll change this to a darker arrow. We can make it an actual arrow instead of a happy face. So we could do this or that's a little bit like classier. We'll make it smaller and we'd want to make sure that it's not overlapping on the image because if an image was filling up this whole space, you wouldn't see this. And then we can go to click actions and we'll do a action instead of a link. We can make this gallery and the target is gallery one. So if, if you had a page that had a ton of galleries on it, I don't recommend doing that. But if you did, you could target up to 10 galleries with these. Um, and I'm going to say next. And then I could also copy and paste this. I could flip it around, move it over here. I'm going to drag and select the whole thing too and align them to the center. And then this one would actually need to come out here in order for it to be even. But I could click on this guy and do previous. And so then if I come up here and I preview it, I can auto advance these on my own. If I was doing this in real life too, I would want to turn on mobile because right now you'll see everything is overlapping. So my best practice when I'm working on show up websites is to do the desktop version of something and then immediately turn on the mobile and format it for mobile. If I was doing this on mobile, I'd probably move this guy down here. I would make these smaller. Um, I'll just show you real quick. Make this bigger. Move this over here. I would align everything to the center. And actually, I think I could put these below. Let's see. And I can check the size of these to see how big they are and make them even. So the size on this one is 28 by 28. So I can click on this and do 28 by 28. I can move them down here and center that. I can make this bigger, well, a wider text box, a smaller title, and then I'd have it set up for mobile. So that is the first style of gallery. Second one, I'm going to copy this canvas and um, hide it and do another one. In real life, when I'm doing client galleries or project galleries, I put each gallery on its own page and I name the pages for search engines and that helps me optimize each and every gallery that I'm doing. Um, for this though, I'm just going to keep duplicating canvases. So actually not, not a canvas view. Let's duplicate that. Let's uncheck these to hide this canvas and then we'll just make this my second gallery. So I can come over here and I can change this to be a let's say a Pinterest style gallery. So instead of simple, I'm going to do a tiled gallery, which is what they call a Pinterest style gallery. I can remove those arrows because you probably aren't going to need them for a gallery like this. And then I can start playing with the columns and the padding. So I think two columns is probably going to result in a um, prettier gallery. I can make this bigger and I'm going to center it. And then I like to add a lot of padding between my images. So Something like that, I think, makes it feel more high end. I could even set this to lock to expand to the edges of the screen. And so what that's going to do is it's going to make it feel more full screen and less contained in a box. So if you want that like super high end look, this is something you could try. If I was really going to do that, you, I might even double this. So instead of 30 pixels, we could try 60 pixels. And I think that's more like a dynamic engaging um, look. And so they feel big, but they don't feel like so tight that they're crowded. Um, right now, if you click on them, it opens up a light box and you can preview the image larger. Um, and let's see, you can control that too, whether you want it to like enable a border around your images. And when it goes into full screen, you can control the background color. So if I wanted it to be white and then the controls colors, when we preview that, to be a different color. I'll show you that, what that looks like. I can click on this. And now instead of the black background or you couldn't really see the arrows, it's white. And somebody could click on these to auto scroll between the bigger, the images at a bigger size. Another thing you'll notice, and this is the thing I talked about before, is that 
this canvas automatically grows and expands with the gamut images. So regardless of how big the images are or how many they are, even though you only see this like tiny little snippet right here of the, um, the canvas, it's going to keep growing. So this is another style of gallery. Sometimes when I do these galleries, I will make them like kind of over on the right side. If I was going to do that, I'd probably turn off the edge locking or lock it just to one side. And then you could take this name, these names and put them over here. And you could add like more text right here for vendor details or a description or a link to a blog post, um, et cetera. So that is another gallery style. I'm going to turn this guy off and then I'll show you the third gallery. So let's duplicate that. And I'm going to turn this one back on and I'm going to leave my arrows on for now. So let's take this gallery and let's lock it to or expand it to be on the edge of either side of the page. Um, we are going to turn this into a slide, a, a sliding gallery. So we'll make it a sliding gallery, which means that the images all line up next to each other and it kind of scrolls horizontally. I think I need to make this canvas a little bit taller. I'm going to add more space in between these images to make it feel a little bit more high end. I want the images to loop, which means that it always keeps going. Even if you've seen all the images, we could show dots. I think it kind of looks cluttered when you show the dots, but there's some controls here too. If you wanted to make the dots smaller um, or space them out more or offset them further from the image like that, I'm going to turn off the dots. Um, we can set it to auto advance or not auto advance. And then another cool thing that you can do on show it is to set the image to um, like the, the image that is right in the center to be bigger or smaller. Um, so let's say I want the this image right in the center where we're selected on to be bigger and everything else to be smaller and less trans and more transparent. I could say that I want the other ones to be 60% and let's actually type 60%. No, nope. So we'll just bump these down so you can see how it's changing. So we're down to 60, 65% right here. And then I could change the opacity of those so that they're more, um, more transparent and this one is more of the focus and so if we come over to the preview I need to clean up those arrows you can kind of see how they come in from the sides and this one gets bigger and it gets darker um, so that's something that you can do you could blur these out so that you really can't see what is off to the side you can change how many images are preloaded off to the sides we could set this to be locked to the edges of the screen so that's going to make it look something more like that um, and then another way that you could do this gallery is we could go back here and we could undo that selected image. They're all back to the same size, which makes it that like neat tiled look. And we can take these little arrows and we can set them to advance this gallery as well. So you could put them down here. Uh, where's our other guy right here and like add a little note to people, letting them know that you can navigate that you could put them over the images as well. You could make them white or you could put a background colored box behind them and lock those to the sides of the screen. So let's make those white. Let's align everything to the center and then let's set these guys and lock them to the edges. So I'm gonna click lock to the left on that one and I'm gonna click lock to the right on that one. And so then if I hit preview, then my gallery is right here and I could either drag and select with my cursor or I could use these little gallery arrows to auto advance the galleries. All right. So I think that is everything that you guys need to know about show it galleries. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more show it resources or other design and marketing resources, make sure you hit thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks guys.